one antique photography here with the first episode and before I get into the video I just wanted to say sorry to any of my old viewers again uh, for the change of everything I am dedicating this channel photo to photography but I will continue the antique archaeology Instagram page link in the description to anyone new or anyone that stumbles upon this channel or the Instagram page so here we have a 1897 Kodak number no. 4 cartridge camera. Now, uh, these cameras were first produced in 1897 and were made up until 1906. And this is a earlier variant of these cameras. Because on the later ones, um, let me just get this a little bit back. On the later ones, they had a metal um, lens plate the thing that holds the lens in place. Um, but the earlier ones have a wooden one. Now, I got this camera off of eBay, and this is what I would consider a barn find camera, considering on how overall rough it is on the outside. You can see a lot of the wood showing through, and uh, I do believe these are made out of solid mahogany. And uh, coming to the back here, we have the um, film, uh, the sheet film adapter, the 4x5s. And they have inside, they have one of these. Let me just scoot the camera off to the side. These are the uh, 4x5 film holders that you would put the sheets of film into. Normal cameras would take roll film. Um, these take sheets. Now, what you would do for these is when it was pitch black out, because, you know, film's light sensitive, you can't have it out like that, you would open this up and you would put the sheet film in there and you would close it and then you would put it into the camera. Now this right here, this black piece, is called a dark slide. And what this would do is it would protect the film until you uh, put it into the camera. And when you had your film in here, you would put the dark slide in the film holder, and you would put the cartridge in the camera that goes this way, this. And when you were ready to take a picture, you would uh, pull the dark slide out and all that, and then you would take your picture. Now the back of this camera does open up, and I'll show you that right now. This just lifts off when you um, take the thing out. And actually, right here, I forgot to mention, there's a little door for viewing your shot. And, yeah. So this camera is in really rough shape on the outside. It's probably been sitting out for a while. And uh, I'm glad I got it before it rotted away. Now this is the inside of the camera, and normally it would have a solid um, back, because this is a roll film camera as well. It takes rolls of film. Now, I'm not sure what size film they made, because they definitely made a lot of film, the Kodak company. And um, I'm not too sure what particular size this one is. It's very long. And uh, yeah, so this is the inside of the camera. You have your bellows, and then you'd have the lens. Let me just uh, prime that and fire it. But the light would come through the back, and it would expose the image on a 4x5 negative. And, um, yeah, that's basically the back of the camera. And moving back to the front, we have a very nice front. Um, this is the, uh, focusing wheel. It can move the... I'll show it from a side view. It moves the lens back and forward to get the perfect view. And it has the distances right here and, um, I think the name right there. And it has two viewfinders, one for a uh, portrait and one right here for landscape. 
and these cameras are coated in leather. Well, not coated, they're covered. Um, so, yeah, that's why it looks rusty, but there's no rust on this camera. It can't really rust. There's no nails holding it together. It's kind of like, um, kind of like this, and it's glued. So that's how that works. And there's a little lever right here, and you can lift and lower the lens to get a different style of image. I'm not too fond of doing that because these bellows, although they're light tight still after 120 years, um, they're stiff and fragile because they're made out of a leatherette or real leather. I'm not sure what they were made of out of back then. But they have a really nice uh, maroon um, reddish color to them, which a lot of the older Kodak cameras did. And which is why I want to start collecting more of them, because I do prefer the red bellows over the black bellows, or any other color. Because red just goes really well with this leather and wood and brass. It just, it's really uh, appealing to me. And of all things, I am really glad that it does have the original handle, because even on cameras from the 60s or even the 70s, they tend to break or uh, fall off. So the fact that this one's 120 years old, around that, and uh, still, you know, there, it's uh, pretty cool. So I'm going to start working on fixing up this camera a little bit, um, maybe trying to do something about this leather. I'm not really too sure what to do about it. But as it stands, if I can adjust some parts to fit a little bit better and make things fit overall just better, um, this camera is almost ready to be used. If there are any pinhole leaks in the bellows that can be patched, I'll patch them. And uh, yeah, if I ever have the opportunity to use this camera, I definitely will. So also, I'm not sure about this, but... I'm pretty sure these were around the time of the powder flash, so there's no like flash outfit adapters on this camera so you can put a flash on it because that is pre-camera flash era. And um, that's really it for this video. I mean there's not a whole lot to show since this camera is really just basic. I mean the shutter, I mean it works and everything on all the uh, settings and all the different speeds and the aperture works the glass is not cracked and uh yeah so uh that's gonna be it for this video if you like the video be sure to like comment and subscribe if you haven't already and uh i'll catch you in the next one bye